Welcome back to Atlanta Falcons franchise where there was an update today on Madden 24. And as I've said before, the game can always end up playing very, very strangely post update. So we're going to see what this game looks like against the Broncos. They're at 82 overall and they're only five and 10. This is the penultimate week of the regular season to so just one more following this game against Denver. And I am actually pretty excited to go to mile high. It is always a pretty cool stadium to play in. I've liked it for a while in Madden and uh, it should be a ton of fun. And on top of that, actually probably being able to compete in this game and have a good chance against a not so great team should make it even better. We do have Desmond Ritter back this week, but my focus is going to be on developing Trey Lance, I think for the rest of this season. We'll, uh, as I did not mean to throw that, uh, we'll see who ends up being the starter next year. You know, people want to see me draft a quarterback. I am uh, super aware of that, but this class just doesn't really have many quarterbacks to be excited about. So you kind of have to make the most of what uh, we already have on the roster, and that is Desmond Ritter. That's Trey Lance. And we're looking for Trey Lance to continue to show us something here. And uh, we'll see if that ends up happening. Wasn't so great last week. I need a better performance today, that's for sure. So Desmond Ritter practiced today. He's going to be good to go. I think we're going to give at least the first half to Trey Lance. I'm not going to say Desmond Ritter is not going to play at all, as we have a broken finger for Davion Nixon who doesn't really rotate in very much with the defensive tackles, but he is on the team. So I guess he's going to be injured for this week 17 matchup. Do have some upgrades before we jump into this game. It is a couple of rookies. Kyrie Yankee, the first up to superstar dev. I would love to get his block shedding into the 80s. So we're going to go ahead and do run stopper. It's his main scheme fit anyways. So kind of works out. Plus one to block shed, two to pursuit, one to strength. Do want power moves to go up even more. Desmond Ritter is actually on this upgrade list as well. For Deshaun Humphreys, his coverage really isn't bad. If he's going to be a monster linebacker, though, he's going to have to be able to shed blocks at an elite level. So getting block shedding up via run stopper is going to be the way to go for me. Plus two to block shed. We're going to end up doing coverage at some point, but I'd like to get block shed into the 80s before we really focus on coverage too much. And then for Desmond Ritter, I mean, the accuracy should be good. It's just usually not when we use them for some reason. The speed's great. Like on paper, Desmond Ritter is an awesome franchise quarterback to build around. Star development. He's 25 years old. It's not super young, but it's also far from old. And he's someone in real life that could end up being good. I know that sounds crazy. He just got benched for, you know, Taylor Heineke. But he's someone who's fairly accurate, has a pretty good arm. It's just you have to be way more careful and smart with the football. Way too many turnovers, whether it's just coughing it up on the ground uh, or throwing brain-dead interceptions. He can be better. He's got the good physical tools. He's got to be better up here, I think. Empower field at mile high. And it's New Year. Wow. There's Russell Wilson. Been cooking this year. Riding with Broncos country. 3,500 yards, 19 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. And our guy Trey Lance. I don't know if he's our franchise quarterback. He's certainly shown signs of being that franchise level guy, even though that sounds crazy, even though, uh, even though some of you don't like Trey Lance very much. There are things to be excited about with him. And if we can develop some type of consistency with him where we feel really comfortable with him as the starting quarterback, we're going to have a good time. So Monday night football, primetime action, a couple of teams that probably will not make the playoffs. The Broncos certainly are eliminated. We, I think, still have some type of chance if we went out. I don't even know if it's 30% to make the playoffs. I'm not really sure. We need other teams to lose. But at the very least, there is a chance. So if we lose, the season is all but certainly over. If we win, it still could be. But there is still a chance we sneak in. So we'll see what happens. Young Wei Koo's going to kick. And we are underway. Broncos will take it at the 25. And here are the Broncos. We have a ton of superstars now on this team. Kyrie Yankee, Deshaun Humphreys. Like the upgrades to superstar dev, they're just so massive because you get those abilities which can help change the game. You develop at a faster rate. And I think we've got very lucky so far. Granted, I am doing every practice drill. But the fact that Deshaun Humphreys and Kyrie Yankee were both upgraded via practice in the same season feels pretty awesome. So I'm pretty excited about that. We have a couple of guys on defense we can feel really good about for the future. That's D-Hump. That's Kyrie Yankee. AJ Terrell, obviously. I mean, Jesse Bates should be good. Arnold Ebicady now has superstar dev. 
I think he had that in like one of the first episodes of the entire series. Be nice if he were going to be a, a little bit more developable at this point. I don't think he's really been upgraded too much. But it'd be nice if he can just become a game-wrecking edge rusher for us. Hasn't happened so far. And there's Caden Ellis going sideline to sideline as he does. Look at that speed. He's probably not somebody we can build around. I know he's been so great for us in this franchise series. But eventually we're going to have to start looking at his replacement. He's into his mid to late 20s. He's not a particularly high overall. As the Broncos try a screen, it is completely shut down. Zach Harrison was there. And the Broncos will punt. Great start for our defense. Need our offense to do something uh, that we haven't seen in a lot of first halves this year, which is just come out strong. It's been a lot of second half success for us. If we start out hot, we're going to win the game. And these aren't awful numbers. It's coming up on 2,000 yards. Could hit that in this game. 14 touchdowns to 7 interceptions for Trey Lance. He really has been on a roll of late. We've been more careful with the football. He's been more accurate. It's been a lot of fun to play. As this was not known to me that I was calling read option. I, I do that so often. It's just, it's just unusual. It's inside zone in like 90% of plays. And I just never, I never know when I'm calling read option. It's extremely frustrating. Quick throw over the middle. There's Drake London. Get 10 yards. It's going to be third down and four. We could try a screen. They ran one on third down. Did not work. Are we just not going to learn from their failures? Or are we going to execute better? And I think the answer is we're going to execute better. There's B. John Robinson showing patience. Kind of got caught up on his own blockers there, but ends up finding enough room, getting the first down. And we are, yeah, learning from their failures by executing better, which is nice. And we're going to go ahead and uh, throw the football here. Wide open underneath is Drake London on a shallow cross. It's a big play for our offense. And this is not a bad first drive. I want to avoid third downs if we can. Obviously, that doesn't always work out. But uh, we are starting off pretty nicely. That's for sure. And we're going to throw the ball quickly again. Kind of like that, but can't really find much with Pitts. I mean, Drake London's open instantly. That's where we're going to go with the football. Look at Drake London. Nice catch. JL Skinner was there. Tried to make Drake London drop the football. And I thought he probably was going to, by the way, as we've seen in... A lot of games this season, Drake London has not been super reliable for us, but that's a nice catch. And once again, we move the chains. And I'd love to be able to rely, uh, rely on Bijan Robinson in these these uh, situations where we just hand our best player the football. But his first carry of the game does not go for anything. In fact, we lose to play action. Robinson, they don't bite. Patterson could be working open, and that pass sails over him and. Rashid Shahid in the area as well. I don't even know if he knew the football was thrown. Zero awareness from Rashid Shahid. And I think we just streak Kyle Pitts here. And if they drop back, we just throw it over them anyway. There it is. Kyle Pitts right up the seam. Big power to break a tackle. And he stretches to the end zone. What an opening drive. Kyle Pitts, man. Only three catches last week. Two here on this opening drive. And this one, of course, counts for six. First one only went for like a yard. This one a lot better than that. You know, I'm kind of surprised he turned that into a touchdown. Just use that power and that size to uh, decimate the Broncos secondary. A couple guys in there tried to bring him down. Didn't end up working out. And it is 7-0. Offense couldn't have done a whole lot better. And the defense, we saw what they did on the first drive. We are off to an excellent start. It's what we needed to do. Start hot and carry this momentum throughout the entire game. Third and four, Broncos have the ball around midfield. Trying to hold them back from getting the first down here. Russ might take off, and he ends up throwing it away on third down. Unless this is four down territory, I don't love the decision for the Broncos, but I'm happy about it as a Falcons guy. Looks like they're going to punt. Could have just run the ball there, set up fourth and short from close to midfield. Obviously, that would have been the goal if you couldn't actually get the first down. But also, if you're just going to end up punting, Throw the ball down the field. Take a chance. The throwaway does not help you in that spot, as this should be the final play of the first quarter. Bijan finds a little bit. I can see this play, uh, this play working out pretty well for us. Play action. Find a receiver. It's Cordero Patterson, and that's intercepted. <laughs> all right, that did not work out pretty well at all. 
Justin Simmons with the interception. Big hit from Bijan. But that is a turnover that we didn't need. We've been so good about that in recent weeks, not turning over the football with Trey Lance. And I just feel like a lot of times historically in this series, when I try to hit the deep crosser to Cordero Patterson specifically, it just does not work out for one reason or another. I have to just stop trying it. It doesn't work for me. To play action, that's going to be wide open. I don't know what we can even do about that. Just man coverage didn't work and he finds the end zone. Marvin Mims with a speed burst that, I mean, defies physics. Surely. How does he end up getting into the end zone there? How is that even possible? I mean, he just ran away from everybody. He bounced off a tackle and just shot like a cannon ball into the end zone. Unbelievable. All right, tied up. Showing pressure here. We're going to try to run against it. And I feel like there was a little bit of space there. Bijan just not quite quick enough to hit that hole. And I don't know that any running back would, by the way. That is uh, something that closed tremendously quickly. And it's going to be second and nine. Love to get the football to Kyle Pitts. We're going to give him a try here. And he actually comes down with it. Breaks another tackle. Kyle Pitts might be the guy we lean on heavily today. Trey Lance off to a great start minus the interception. Really makes those numbers look a whole lot worse right now. But he's been very good when targeting Kyle Pitts. And that's just probably because Kyle Pitts is great. But I think we stared at him too long on that play. End up getting sacked, losing nine. Third and 19. I think the tight end's open. It's Neil Madsen. Neil Madsen is gone. The rookie out of Utah goes back to the same area. Colorado, Utah, it's close enough, right? I don't know. I, I was I want to say like a region, but like the Rocky Mountain area, I guess. Does that stretch to Utah? They got some mountains going on. Either way, you know, I don't know. It's close-ish. Colorado and Utah touch. That's what I'm going for. I don't know. Moving on. What a great play by the rookie tight end, Neil Madsen. Third and 11. Defense is playing very well in this one. Russ with just a check down now. You get a couple back, but it's going to give them a couple more yards on a punt. Defense playing great, except for that weird Marvin Mims touchdown. But I'm not really going to worry about that right now. Played a pretty good half. Five minutes left to go here in the half. I'd love another score. 21-7 would be phenomenal. Obviously, anything uh, better would also be good. And Cordero Patterson has put the football on the ground. That's a second consecutive week. Last week, I guess it was overturned. I'm not dealing with this anymore. You're done. Get me Rashid Shaheed back there or something. I cannot trust Cordero Patterson to return kicks anymore. It just cannot happen. Third and four. Broncos in a spot where they could tie up this game. Russ breaks a sack, finds a receiver, first down Broncos. No. CJ Uzama's made his way out to Denver. His fourth catch of the game. We're finding out in a hurry that he's a Denver Bronco. Why is this the guy? Four catches already? Russ might have six completions. It's out of control. Absolutely out of control. Shot to the end zone. Jeff Okuda hands on the football. It's going the other way. Let's go. Turnover right back. It's a turnover game so far. Three in the first half uh, for both teams combined. We, of course, have two of them. But Russell Wilson, I mean, perfect throw to Jeff Okuda. Great job. Except that Jeff Okuda doesn't play on the Broncos. Kind of the one hold up there. We going back to Madsen? Why are they not covering this guy? Neil Madsen, foot race to the end zone. He's caught from behind, but a massive play. Neil Madsen, the vertical threat, dominating. Back-to-back -back catches on two different drives here. Last one going for a touchdown, and this one going nearly for a touchdown. What, like 60, 70 yards up the field? This guy's unstoppable right now. Two catches for 140 yards. How about another touchdown for Neil Madsen? They called him a bust. Our top pick in the draft, showing why we drafted a tight end, even with having Kyle Pitts. They're both having great games. Neil Madsen now finds the end zone for the second time. Massive, massive plays for him. He is completely dominating. Screen. 
Take the football away, popped him into the air. Kyrie Yankee nearly with a thick six. The big man dropped an interception that would have gone for a touchdown. Surely it was right in his hands, but that's why he's playing interior defensive line and not wide receiver or I guess tight end. 300 pound tight end would be something. They're going to try another screen. Caden Ellis all over it. We're actually going to call a timeout. It's going to be third and 14. The Broncos keep trying the same things. They are not working. And this is probably going to be a conservative play call. It's a run here on third and 14. Javante Williams breaks a tackle, but can't find much more than that. We're going to call a timeout. We're going to have essentially a two minute drill, one timeout to get back at least close enough to the end zone for three. And, uh, of course, the touchdown would be nice as well. So we're going to try to work our way up the field or down the field. Up the field, down the field. We're going to go somewhere with the field. And I guess targeting Neil Madsen seems to be the best way to do that right now. This guy is on another level. I mean, he could have a 200-yard game in theory, right? And oh, we, we're going to take a chance to him again. Just held the football too long. Trey Lance with a three-touchdown half did have that interception. They want us to call the same play. I don't think I like that. We're going to go to something else here. We don't need to just completely go down the field. I see B. We're going to roll out with Trey Lance, looking to make something happen. And they just contained and... Ugh. Waste of a drive. Third and ten. We're going to go back to Madsen. And we just let him too far up the field. I think we're just... We're just trying to be too stupid at this point. We don't need to keep going vertically down the field. I guess maybe on third and ten a little bit, but it uh, didn't end up happening for me there. I'm sure I missed an open receiver. We're going to punt the football back, and hopefully Denver has no time to get back down the field, but they might. 43 seconds, three timeouts. It's possible. We just uh, need, to, need to play good football here and, and don't let them get deep down the field. They want to check down. That's fine. We just got to be able to wrap up, take time off the clock. Screen! We're all over it. Incomplete. Frankie Louvu was there to break it up in some sense. I think he just kind of got in the way while falling down. But it doesn't matter how it happens as long as it happens. Second and 10. 35 seconds to go here from the 38. Wilson out of the shotgun will throw. And we're taking away over the middle. He's going to lob it up, but it's really more of a throw away. Jerry Judy in the area. We got the stop on third down. Just a check down from Russell Wilson. Nothing too exciting. And we're going to go into the halftime with a big lead. 21-7. We are killing it through the air, but it's really only a couple of plays. But they also happen, so it's not like we're not going to count them. Big first half. We'll try to just keep this momentum going. You can see the scores from around the league. Of course, this is Monday, so every game except for this one in this week has been played. Who did we need to lose here? The Panthers. They end up losing. The Saints end up losing, and the Bucks don't matter. So is the division still up for grabs? I think we need the Eagles to lose as well, but they won. A lot of teams pretty close. Tampa wins. It doesn't really matter. I think it's just the Eagles and the Panthers that we're really competing with as potential playoff teams, and, and the Saints too, maybe. Maybe the Vikings. But we have the Vikings pick, so them winning I don't love. And here at halftime, this video is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy, where you can use code BANGLE to get an up to $500 deposit match on your first deposit. So if you put in $500, you'll get a free $500 on top of that. These are my picks for Sunday. As usual, I'd recommend picking like two or three that you like because the more that you add, the lower your chances of winning are, especially when you add in these scorchers. Now, they increase your total multiplier so you can make more money if you're right, but the odds of hitting it are much lower. But I like to take some chances, throw it on five or 10 bucks and try to really make something. Jalen Waddle, higher 67 and a half receiving yards against KC. Legereus needs such a great corner. Maybe slows down Tyreek Hill a little bit. I still expect him to have a big game, but Jalen Waddle coming off a big performance of his own. I think he continues that against Kansas City. Tyler Lockett is just such a great receiver. He's really been higher than this number, 49 and a half, quite a bit. Lucas Haversick, higher one and a half field goals made. It's like a 1.25x multiplier, and he's been over or higher in his last two weeks out. So hope he makes two this week as well. CJ Stroud has just been killing it. 
a little slower these past couple of weeks. I expect him to bounce back against the Tampa Bay defense that has struggled to defend the pass. And then Rashid Shahid to score a rushing or receiving touchdown, obviously hoping for you know some type of deep bomb down the field with him. Don't hate his receiving yards number either. I would definitely suggest taking that if you want to be more conservative. And then my college football, got to rock with the Longhorns. Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell for receiving yards and a touchdown for Adonai Mitchell. Shatavion Sanders, higher 28 and a half receiving yards. And Malik Neighbors catches a touchdown every week. I don't know if that's going to change against Bama, but if LSU has any chance of winning this game, I think a lot of it is going to be revolving around Malik Neighbors. So I know all of you can't play college football, but this is what I like. I think Jatavion's number's too low. I think Xavier Worthy's number's too low. Adonai Mitchell's more hit or miss, but uh, I like both of these for Texas for sure. So use code BENGAL when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy, and thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this video. Let's get to the third quarter. Start of half number two. Listen, we have the football. If we score here, it looks really good for our chances of winning this game, but we can't get too crazy. Maybe even another touchdown would let me put Desmond Ritter in this game to see what he's capable of. But we got to be smart, and that's giving the ball to Bijan Robinson, and he has an angle. There goes Bijan, juking back to the inside, breaking a tackle, and right to midfield is Bijan Robinson. Only four carries in this game for him. That's going to change in the second half. That's for sure. Nice play, Bijan. Second and eight. Oh, it's a ton of space for Bijan. Can we turn this into six? Not quite stopped at the six. Seven carries now for 66 yards. A lot of sixes flying around. Hopefully, Bijan's going to be all right here. First and goal from the gun. Madsen is just uncovered. And we're, we should have touchdown number three. The pump fake for Trey Lance fooled everybody. And that's why Neil Madsen finds the end zone for the third time in four catches. They're just not really covering him off the line. And we're taking full advantage of it. The rookie having a dominant performance. Absolutely unbelievable. He's just, he's been crazy this game. Oh, under pressure is Russell Wilson. Grady Jarrett gets to him. We don't know what his future is going to be like in Atlanta. I've mentioned that a few times over the course of this season. But I'm still liking when he's playing up to a high level. Ebicady was in there as well. I don't think he's going to give credit for anything, but... Just a friendly face for Grady Jarrett to see when he gets up after the sack. I don't know. They're buddies. And it's third and 18. Only sending four at Russ. It's going to be another check down. Mike Hughes just pushes Jerry Judy out of bounds. We're going to get the football back again. They've been so conservative. 17 attempts for 82 yards for Russell Wilson. And I get that it's fourth and 12 from your own 23. You kind of have to punt. But you're also down 28 to 7. How many more possessions do you realistically have? Especially if we're going to run the ball like we have to start this second half. Like, you're basically asking to lose. Working off play action on second and three. George Espinosa's open, but so is Kyle Pitts. And the tight ends are just crushing the Broncos. They have absolutely no answer right now for Neil Madsen and for Kyle Pitts. And we might, you know, shoot Madsen up the field vertically again. See what he can do. Here's a shot to the end zone for Madsen. It's touchdown number four. What a breakout performance from Neil Madsen. They called him a bust. They hated this pick. And now he is single-handedly dominating the Denver Broncos on prime time as he goes back to the Rocky Mountain area. It's, I mean, it's close enough, right? You, I think you'd call Utah Rocky Mountain State at least gets across the top there. I looked at a map. I, I still feel like it's pretty good. And I listen, I know a lot of you have been asking about the GeoGuessr videos on my channel, Gene Dangus, link below, and also on my channel. I just haven't had the time. Same thing with the MLB The Show channel. I know my Red Series were in the World Series, and the World Series just ended yesterday as I record this. So it's kind of now or never. I'm just focusing on the main channel right now. I'd love to at least finish this season. It's going to happen, I hope, at some point. But I don't have a precise date on that yet. So that's that's that update. If you're interested in watching for, uh, for potential updates on my other channels, that's what's going on. Oh, that's going to be bad. That's going to be bad. There goes Javante Williams. Terrell drags him down. Okuda there as well. Frankie Luvu injured on the play. 
anything that could have gone wrong in that play seems like it did. Big time injury. It's going to bring Zach Harrison back out. John Graves back out onto the field. It was uh, back from injury. So he can't wrap up Williams. Neither can Okuda. It's another first down as Javante Williams goes over 100 on the game. That's really been the only thing that's worked well for them. Our coverage has been good in this one, and Russell Wilson's just been incredibly conservative. There could have been things that have been open. Uh, I really haven't seen too much down the field, but the one thing we can't seem to stop right now is Javante Williams. Had like a whatever first half, but he's got it going a bit here in half number two, but it's just going to be too little too late, I think. 35-7, to seven, nearly to the fourth quarter here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, how many possessions, how many snaps do you have left? And that is an interception. It's going to be one fewer possession as Mike Hughes just steps in front of a slant. And we have the football back again. Another turnover in this one for Russell Wilson. And that's at a time you could not have one. You worked down the field. You needed a touchdown to get back in this game. And just not open. Russell Wilson doing what I do sometimes, which is just predicting that it's going to be open, trying to throw with anticipation. It did not work. And I've, I've been on that end of that as well. That is the end of the third quarter. We are looking at third and six. Just running the football. Just trying to take time off the clock. That's pretty much it right now. We should be able to win this game. And I know it's like tank for the draft pick. Just tank for the draft pick. I'm trying to win every game that we play. It's pretty much what it comes down to. And, uh especially when we could potentially still be a playoff team. I'm working on it as we can't find Drake London. Either way though, punt or not, Trey Lance has been phenomenal. Just targeting Neil Madsen in this game. Trey Lance with five touchdowns. That should surely be a penalty. Don't worry about it. But five passing touchdowns for Trey Lance. Bijan's had a great game on the ground on, you know, a minimal amount of touches overall. But we've just dominated this one. Post update, it's feeling pretty easy to beat this Broncos team in a submission, but it is also the Broncos. That's something to keep in mind, at least. Football comes loose. Williams picks it up after the fumble. Legs taken out again. It's a pretty quick recovery from Javante Williams, who coughed it up. His fourth catch of the game. Thankfully for the Broncos, they keep the football. I don't know that it's going to do much for them, but they got to stop. Just We took more time off the clock, and that is not uh, in their favor right now as that pass is dropped, and Lloyd Cushenberry, the starting center, injured on the play. Oh, broken tackle, Cortland Sutton, legs taken out. I'm fine though, just take more time off the clock. If the Broncos score a garbage time touchdown, congratulations. I think what we're gonna end up doing is take Trey Lance out of the game, put Desmond Ritter in, and uh, see what Ritter can do with this fourth quarter. Broncos with the ball on the one, George Elliott, one of our goal line off-ball linebackers into the game, the undrafted rookie free agent. He comes around to get an, at least an assisted tackle on that as Eric rushing the rookie out of Utah, Neil Madsen's teammate from a year ago. We looked at him in the draft, ended up not drafting him, just didn't need another running back. He was stuffed, and so is Javante Williams on the next play. Third and goal, four minutes to play. The Broncos keep trying to overpower us, and we are not... To be overpowered right now third and goal from the four they're gonna try to pass and that is wide open in the end zone touchdown probably should have tried to do that already broncos with the score and as i mentioned earlier i think it's just gonna be too little too late for him 35 14 maybe you try an onside maybe you don't you probably just can't get back in this one they are gonna try an onside kick i, I guess they're still in this as george espinoza the rookie fullback recovers and we should just be able to kill clock here. Starting from the 36, Desmond Ritter back. For the first time in a long time, may have conceded the starting job to Trey Lance. He'll get at least some opportunity here. Second and one, gonna work off play action. Look to throw with Ritter down the field, finding an open Drake London. Broken tackle, another touchdown. Ritter's first throw off the IR goes for a touchdown to Drake London. His first in a long time. Well, they were obviously ready for the run. Play action just completely shut down their defense there. Drake London gets absolutely wide open. And Ritter hits him. I think anyone could make that throw. But you still got to make it. Ritter goes out and makes it 42-14. And we have thrown for 
like 300 plus yards. We're, I think, close to 400 yards total as a team today. 426 total yards. Just a dominant performance. That's wide open. CJ Uzama again. This guy's unbelievable. Throw over the middle. Nice hit by Deshaun Humphreys. Judy just kind of turned his back to him. An interesting way to take that hit. Just his fourth catch of the game. And there's just over a minute to play here in this one. 42-14. A, a great game from us. As Humphreys is there again. This time causes an incompletion. Man, he's a fun player. This is a, a really, really nice draft class from us. And we didn't even have a first round pick. Didn't end up spending a first round pick, maybe I should say. And we've we just had studs down the board. And I know people were not thrilled with the draft class, but what can you say about it now? We have two guys that are close to an 80 overall at the end of their rookie seasons and Deshaun Humphreys, D-Hump, and Kyrie Yankee, both now with superstar development. Neil Madsen is having a career game as Deshaun Humphreys kind of beat there in coverage. Cortland Sutton finds the end zone for the second time today. But yeah, our rookie class, I feel like, has been pretty awesome. Riley Wheeler, we drafted, who's had to start a lot this year with the injury to Chris Lindstrom. You know, he's done a decent enough job for us. And this is just a really nice win where everything's kind of working tonight. Trey Lance, five touchdown game. Could have been six. Some people are probably mad I took him out of the game. I wanted to see what Ritter could do. And it's just handing the ball off to B. John Robinson, really, for the rest of this game. And uh, that's pretty much it. Probably not going to try and throw it again. And we might not even have to. There goes Rashid Shahid. He's just probably going to be our primary returner now. I can't really keep sending Cordero Patterson out there. He's just he's just cooked. That's pretty much what it is. He's past his prime, and he's got to be done. That's just what it is. Bijan probably shouldn't even be playing in this one either. And that is the ball game. 42-21, Deion Sanders with the tackle. Nice. I knew he was in Colorado. That must be him. No, Drew Sanders. Uh, should have picked Texas over Arkansas in my head. But ended up transferring to Arkansas from Alabama. Ended up becoming a pretty highly drafted player. So good on him. But look at this game. Only 13 completions for Trey Lance. But for 313 yards, 5 touchdowns. Of course, did have the one interception. Russell Wilson ended up having an okay game. But really not as good as it looked he didn't play that well was super conservative Ritter one for one for 28 yards and a touchdown rushing I mean we had a bit of a tough time stopping Javante Williams in the second half in the first half it was pretty good Bijan with a nice enough game Algier had a nice carry in there and then receiving I mean Neil Madsen goes five for 175 and four touchdowns this is one of the most unbelievable receiving performances of all time let alone for a tight end what a game Drake London and Kyle Pitts also with very similar games. Rashid Shahid, no catches in this one. And then defensively, Caden Ellis, three tackles for loss. Ta Taquan Graham had to hook him. Arnold Ebicady in there as well. Sack for Grady Jarrett. And then interceptions for Mike Hughes and Jeff Okuda. Force fumble as well for Mike Hughes. Uh, of course, recovered by Javante Williams, but just an awesome game all around for the boys. Gotta love it. You know, funnily enough, we didn't end up hitting our game plan goal of 350 plus passing yards. Probably could have if we wanted to. Drake London ends up with an upgrade here. Let's do let's do deep threat. I really like throwing the ball to him down the field. He just doesn't get open enough, but a plus two to deep route running and medium route running and plus one to speed could help that happen a little bit more often. Only 89 speed for him. 93 catching, you wouldn't know it from watching this series. And then Neil Madsen, normal dev. He's only uh, 22 years old, 77 overall, already in the top 14% of all tight ends. That's going to go up even more after this one. Let's work vertical thread here. He's going to go up to a 78 overall. Give me deep route running, please. Doesn't end up happening. No, it does. Plus two. What am I talking about? Catching traffic by one, medium route running by one, short route running by three. I like quite a bit. That goes up to a 75. Now he's in the top 12% of tight ends. He's the number 25 ranked tight end, and he's not even our starting guy, but obviously does end up playing a lot. And I don't even really feel like we forced him the ball this week. He just got open a lot. Now we got the Jeff Fisher record, 8-8. Eight and eight. 
and of course have to play one more game. So we're going to see if we finish above or below 500 next week. But how do we not have an upgrade challenge for Neil Madsen after that one? Absolutely disrespectful. He had like maybe the best receiving game for a tight end in NFL history. Right up there. Has to be. Has to be. But they're like, nah, normal dev is fine. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Did he end up getting Offensive Player of the Week? He sure did. I mean, he was unbelievable. Mike Hughes also, Defensive Player of the Week, is really nice. But, yeah, just a little bit disappointing. He had an insane game. Not really a ton to show for it. But if you guys are ready to see what happens next week, we are 8-8. Eight and eight. Panthers also 8-8. Eight and eight. As the Bucks, we know, advance to 4-12. and 12. This is what the playoffs look like, uh, look like right now. Panthers are the 7 seed. Eagles number 6. So basically, here's what happens. If we win and the Panthers lose, I think we're in. I think it really is just as simple as that. Win and in. Lose and you're out. Eagles are 9-7. and seven. We, in theory, could catch them as well. But the Panthers have the same record as we do. Vikings also 8-8. Eight and eight, So it is going to be a battle to see which of the remaining NFC teams work into the playoffs. Neither the Giants, Packers, Eagles have guaranteed spots yet somehow. Panthers, Falcons, Vikings all in it. If we lose, and a lot of teams lose, there could be some chaos going on. Uh, but not for us. We're, we're going to be out of the playoffs. We have to win. But that's next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.